Hey everyone, Sheena here. So, um, last night I um, felt like watching Everybody Loves Raymond. Again, I know it's random. But I had watched the show once. Well, I've heard about it and seen it on TV, you know, a long time ago. And But at that point in my life, I had never, never was interested in the show. Um, you know, I was younger. I was like in my 20s or what have you. And... But a few years ago, I had rented the series from the library, and I watched the whole thing, and I thought it was funny, you know, especially Raymond's dad, the stuff he would say, thought it was very funny. But last night, I thought, oh, let me watch Everybody Loves Raymond again. Maybe I'll just watch it again all the way through. But as I began to watch it, I began to become irritated because I was realizing that how annoying Raymond's character is. It's like everybody I feel like points out the narcissism in Marie, Raymond's mother, because she is controlling and just she just barges in whenever she wants. She just has a way of being of, of, of being overwhelming. But what aggravated me was not her. What aggravated me was Raymond's character and his inability to um, to be a man. His inability to stop being weak and have good internal strong character. And it reminded me of covert narcissism. And I'm thinking, hmm, I wonder if Raymond's character... Because once, when, when somebody enlightens you and says, hey, it looks like what you're dealing with there is this narcissism or covert narcissism. And then you're like, you know, the whole time, you know, you're, you're maybe just blaming yourself or thinking, well, you know, if I did this better, then maybe things would be different and this person wouldn't be like that, you know. Because we all know that we all have faults, obviously. <laughs> but... I guess narcissism and personality disorder are different because they're like a cluster of behaviors um, that, you know, that interfere with life, with normal life. But anyways, <clears throat> I said that to say that it's not that I want to sit here and call Raymond a narcissist, but it's like when you see those signs that you recognize, you know, somebody puts you onto it, now you recognize the signs and you see it places. And it's agitating because this is a comedy show. It's, it's funny, right? Yeah, like, it is funny. It's it's funny in a comedic way, but realistically, it's not funny. It's actually annoying. So, Raymond is a coward, and covert narcissists are cowards. They lie all the time, and, you know, they tell half-truths. Maybe they mostly tell half-truths. And in the show you find yourself feeling kind of bad for Raymond because, right, that's the empathic person. You're like, oh boy, this guy's always stuck between a rock and a hard place. He's just the sad little victim stuck between his controlling mother, his jealous brother, um, his his demanding wife, right? Like, <clears throat> Deborah's kind of, I feel like she's portrayed as, I don't know, kind of this strong redhead woman you know but she does put up with Raymond's crap but anyways so in this I was just watching the re-watching the pilot episode and what happened was that she Deborah left Raymond Raymond swore that he could handle staying with the kids okay this is what bothers me because they're having this conversation in the bedroom and she's telling him that she wants to go to this certain place and he's like well I can stay with the kids this is what they'll do. This is what covert narcissists do, though. They'll say, oh, well, I can do that. Like, I can stay with the kids. And you're like, well, you know. You're like, well, who's going to feed them and take care of them? Like, And they're like, oh, yeah. Literally, that was a response I got one time. Oh, yeah. Like, wow. Oh, saying, oh, yeah, that's right. I, I got to feed the kids and things like that. Like, that's how you know they're not, they don't even consider themselves parents. <clears throat> Excuse me, I got a bit of a cough. But anyways, in this bedroom episode, he's like, well, I can stay with the kids, you know? And she's like, well... He's like, remember that trip you took for three days? And she's like, yeah, 
I took the kids with me. That's what it's like to be with a covert narcissist. You have to take the kids everywhere you go. They cannot stay with the kids for you while you take a trip and do something. Oh, no, 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 no. That's, that's unheard of. So, and then, you know, uh, the audience laughed at that, right? And, well, no, they laughed when he, he said, well, at least I, I fed myself. See, that's not funny. That's not funny to me anymore. Because when you experience the reality of a covert narcissist and how they truly can't feed themselves, it's, it's really sad. Because you're like, how did you make it to 40 years old? without knowing how to feed yourself because yeah you had that controlling mother maybe that's the um prelude to a covert narcissist is the overbearing controlling mom that does everything for the son i don't know maybe that's just a part of it i don't want to blame people here anything like that i'm just (coughs) thinking it through so yeah so he goes well at least i fed myself Ha ha ha, right? You really accomplished something. So anyways, he convinces Deborah that, yeah, he can stay with the kids while she does something this evening. So Deborah's gone, and he is with the kids. But in but Deborah doesn't want his mom around either. She goes, I just want you to stay with the kids. I don't want your mom coming over and your brother and all this. Well, what ends up happening is the mom and the brother and the dad, they all come over. Raymond has no... First of all, I don't know why they don't keep their door locked that's weird in the show it's like why don't you just lock your freaking door you ever heard of that that he probably doesn't lock the door because he doesn't have enough guts to say (coughs) excuse me he doesn't have enough guts to say um we're busy right now or i'm busy with the kids you know we'll see you guys later okay not tonight he doesn't even have the internal strength and integrity to say that because he 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 made a commitment to his wife, like, yes, I'll be with kids, don't worry, I'm gonna let your mom come over. Well, what's he do? His mom barges in, he doesn't tell them he's busy and, and to leave. And they end up taking care of the kids and his friend convinces him <coughs> to go to a pizza, to go out for pizza. Hey, let's go out for pizza. So he goes out for pizza while the parents stay and take care of the kids. Then, when Deborah gets back, everything is cleaned up she didn't eat she wouldn't have known that the parents were there she goes up and then she hints to him that because he did such a good job that she wants to have sex with him so she walks upstairs she goes i'm gonna go check on the kids just like you know kiss them on the head and say goodnight even though they were already in bed so she checks on the kids raymond's all excited that he's gonna finally gonna get some sex this is so covert narcissistic it's so crazy because this is how they feel about sex they're like "Ooh, i'm getting sex tonight you know like because they're they're so shitty. I mean, they probably know who would really want to have sex with me. I'm so shitty, right? But then, so they get excited, like, oh yeah, I've half truthed my way through, and she thinks that I'm great, and now we're gonna have sex, right? So, um, so then, um, okay, then Deborah comes back into the room, and she's like, wait a second. She's like, I kissed the... What, do you have something you need to tell me? Because I smelled Old Spice on the twins' head, which is the smell of Raymond's dad. So she knew they had come over. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> bear with me with my coffee, I'm sorry. So, um, <clears throat> he admits, yeah, they were over and blah, blah. You know, and that was that. I'm sure they didn't end up having sex. <laughs> <clears throat> but... So I said all that to say that, yeah, he half truth his way. She ended up finding the truth. Got disappointed. You know, <clears throat> most likely didn't have sex with him. And, um, yeah. So this is just a, I don't know, a depiction of that covert narcissist. And you think that Raymond is a, a victim, you know? You feel bad for him. Like, poor Raymond. You know? can't ever measure up to his wife controlling mother but it's not true they're just cowards that's why they have no strength no character they're just i hate to use this word but they're just pussies um that's a vulgar word but like literally that's what really describes them yeah sorry to say they have no character they're just leafs in the wind they're leafs in the wind 
So this is what I have for Raymond. He's a coward. He's full of half-truths. <clears throat> he's afraid of his controlling mother. He has no inner strength. <clears throat> he's weak. He doesn't listen to his wife. Not to say that you listen to your wife and her commands. No, no, no. He doesn't hear her. He doesn't listen to her and, and understand and partner with her to do something. You cannot partner with them. They do not cooperate. They do what they want. Um, and But they pretend to be victims. They're just used to that being in that state. <clears throat> um, <coughs> and not only did he not listen to her, but he pretended to listen to her. And he pretended to do what she asked. So they're fakers, liars, cowards. Yeah. All right, guys. That's it on Everybody Loves Raymond and Covert Narcissism. And uh, maybe I'll make another video on it. We'll see. Take care.